Welcome to chapter 7, the last chapter of the book of Micah. Wait upon the Lord. Read a little in the Greek, and we'll go through the chapter. Eme o te eganethin os synagon kalamin in amito, ke os epiphilida in trigito, uki parcontes votrios tu fagen protogona. Ah, epipothesan e psikimu. Emi psiki? Alas, oi ve, ami, alas, for I became as one gathering stubble in a harvest, and as one gathering grape gleanings, while a cluster uh, of first ripe grapes were not existing to eat, which my soul longs after. Amy, see key? Oh, whoa, my soul. Sounds like Micah's crying out and he's seeing terrible things that are going to happen, realizing what little control he has. I look at the problems of the world, the war going on right now between Israel and Hamas, and there's nothing I can do about it. And very little we can do about most things, except for things that come right into our existence, unless we're high up on the ladder, a president or a king, senator, somebody like that can affect, definitely can affect more people. But we can affect people, uh, our friends and our family, to uh, know Jesus Christ. To me, that's the highest calling that we have. But, Amy, oh my soul, all these things that are going on. And he continues in verse 2, For the reverent one is destroyed from the earth, or the land, and one keeping straight among men exists not. Uh, and all educate unto blood, each by squeezing out his, squeezes out his neighbor. Uh, the idea of the reverend one is destroyed from the earth. The ones keeping straight among men exists not. Perverting our ways uh, of, in general, we have personal sins. We can have adultery or lying, cheating, different personal sins that keep men from being straight. Lawlessness in the land can cause a people to be uh, crooked, to turn away from the right thing because of lawlessness. Uh, we see today in the United States uh, a crumbling of uh, churches. People aren't going to churches anymore, walking away from Christ, and this is uh, throughout the pretty much the Western world. Sort of a answer to the Second Thessalonians two three, where we're told, "For unless the defection should come first, and the man of sin should be uncovered." So the time that we are in, not only all the wars going on, but I believe there is a defection away from uh, Christ. In verse 3, for they prepare their hands for evil. The ruler asks for gifts, and the judge speaks peaceable words for bribes. It's the wish of his soul. So and then we have a corruption of a government can affect a people. The government can be run by people that are uh, corrupt that are looking for themselves, using uh, the people for their own gain. We've seen this in so many uh, countries in history, especially with monarchies taking all of this money for themselves. And uh, we were uh, Samuel was 
told to warn the people when they wanted a king that the king would be doing all these things, taking everything for himself from the people. And then we have uh, the churches. I had a friend that had a home Bible study, and right behind his house was the home of a famous Christian TV, more than an evangelist. They owned the whole uh, television, Christian television network, this man and his wife, and they owned this house, hundreds of million dollar house. And I was talking to the man that had the Bible study, and he said they had many of these houses. I look at how the televangelists and different people in the churches have taken advantage of the people for their own good. Then we have a corruption of an economy. Uh, we can have a banking system that fails. Uh, there was a man in England who, a politician, they didn't like what he was saying. They locked up all of his um, bank accounts. A stock market has uh, failed, and people have lost uh, lifetimes of savings and putting it into stocks. Currency manipulation, we have things like Bitcoin. I'm not saying it is, but uh, different types of alternate currencies that can fail. All these things are, uh, would affect us in one way or another. In verse 4, And I will take out their good things as a moth chews away, and one proceeding by the rule in a day of of watch. So God is going to, I believe, uh, take away the good things if evil does persist. Woe, your punishments came. Now there shall be their weepings and uh, losing all these things, wars, and uh, the results are not good. Then he continues, do not confide in friends and do not hope upon leaders from, uh, and from your bedmate, watch out, to not present anything to her. So the people that are close to you, uh, trusting others rather than God, can be a dangerous thing. Uh, then in verse 6, we, he, ha, he, he, he continues, which is used uh, as a quote by Jesus uh, in Matthew, and it says, uh, for a son dishonors a father, a daughter rises up against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Enemies are all the men, the ones in his own house. Uh, now we go up to Matthew 10, 34, and Jesus says, You should not think that I came to cast peace upon the earth. I came not to cast peace, but a sword. For I came to cleave a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And the enemies of the man are the ones of his own house. And he continues and says, The one being fond of a father or mother above me is not worthy of me. And the one being fond of a son or daughter above me is not worthy of me. And the one who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. The one finding his life will lose it, and the one losing his life because of me will find it. And uh, so all the bad things come even with Christians, as Jesus points out. Uh, believing in Christ, then you pretty much can uh, find yourself in a position many, many times where as soon as somebody finds out you are a Christian, they don't want to have anything to do with you. That's happened to me more than once. One time, I was uh, sitting in a little uh, coffee shop where they had music, and there was a writer's club that had uh, just uh, let out, and these people came to where the music was, and this one man who I know, who was not a believer, but he knew what I was doing. But he uh, came and had a, a friend who was with him, a lady, and 
so he sat there and she sat there and she f figured, well, this guy must be, you know, I'm just reading her mind, you know, fine. And my friend here, um, you know, sitting here and then we started talking and she said, uh, what do you do? And uh, how do you write? Because I think he said I was an author or something like that. And I said, I'm a Bible translator. And she looked at me and startled and said, I'm not going to sit with anybody that believes that BS. And up she went and off she went. And so the enemies, uh, even in the own house, I had a relative that when I, she said, how are you doing? And I told her what I was, you know, I was still doing the translating. Oh, that thing. Uh, it's like, you know, um, it was meaningless to her. In verse 7, it continues, but I will look upon my Lord, Kirion. I will wait upon the Lord, my Sotiri, Mu, uh, my deliverer. The deliverer is not a savior. I don't like the word savior because it's sort of a happens one thing and that's it. it delivering is a ongoing process. I will wait upon the Lord, my deliverer. And it says in Luke 2, 11, for was born to you today a deliverer who is Christ the Lord in the city of David, which was a Bethlehem. And then in Philippians 3.20, it says, Paul says, for of us, the citizenship in the heavens exists, of which also we await a deliverer, the Lord Jesus Christ. See, he's a deliverer. It's not the because I believe in Jesus, I'm delivered. I'm not in heaven yet. We're awaiting the deliverer. We're awaiting this process to take place. Verse 8, Re no, Rejoice not against me, O my enemy, for I have fallen, and I will rise up. For if I shall sit in the darkness, the Lord will give light to me. And we see that in Matthew 4, 16, the people sitting in darkness beheld a great light, Jesus, and to the ones sitting in a place and shadow of death, light arose to them, us, me. I was in the shadow of death. Died would have been in Hades. Oh. And then the anger, nine, the anger of the Lord, I shall endure, for I sinned against him until his doing justice of my cause, and he shall execute my judgment. Uh, the judgment, Jesus says in John nine thirty nine, For judgment I came into this world, that the ones not seeing shall see, and the ones seeing should become blind. If you think that you're sinless, then you're blind, and the ones that need God are the ones that are seeing. And he shall lead me into the light. And continuing up there, uh, I shall see his righteousness. And we have the righteousness of the Holy Spirit. In John 16, 8, uh, I think Jesus says, And having come, that one will reprove the world concerning sin and concerning righteousness and concerning the judgment. So the judgment and the righteousness and sin, and just as we see here in Micah. In verse 10, And my enemy shall see and shall wear shame, saying to me, Well, where is the Lord your God? I had that happen yesterday to a man who came here and I had tea with me and uh, a person I've known for many, many years, an unbeliever, and to to the point of uh, laughing at me when uh, talking about the things of God, that um, of how the ruler of the world uh, is in charge of all the things that are going on in between uh, Israel and Hamas. And he said, oh, you're talking about Satan, I guess. And oh, ha, 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 laughing right in my face. Um, and this is exactly what Micah is saying, laughing in Micah's face. My eyes shall scrutinize her, and her is the enemy up above, which is a feminine right here, uh, ekthra, e ekthra. 
I shall shoot, my eyes shall scrutinize the enemy. Now she will be for trampling as mud in the ways. So the enemies are of God are eventually going to be uh, trampled under the way. And then he continues, a day of plastering of brick is your wiping out, and your laws shall be thrust away in that day. And I believe he's possibly talking about uh, Nebuchadnezzar or Syria or Rome, and the Jews were gone for 2,000 years. No laws, no temple. And your cities shall come unto leveling and into partition of the Syrians. And your fortified cities for a partition from Tyre unto the river and from sea unto sea and from mountain unto mountain. Interesting is talking mountains to sea. That's what the Hamas people throughout the world now are calling for the destruction of Israel by saying from the mountain to the sea. And people that don't know anything about what's going on are just living don't know anything about the Bible, could care less about the Jews or Hamas. And they hear these people in Paris, France, and from the mountains to the sea, they don't realize that they're talking about a complete destruction of Israel. Interesting how it talks about that in Micah. And the land will be for extinction, and Israel eventually was led into extinction by the Romans, uh, with the ones dwelling it because of the fruits of their practices. Boy, uh, the fruits of our practices in the, the country I live in, I've been waiting for the destruction of this country for a long time, and it hasn't happened yet, thank God. He has mercy on us. And so, the, going into extinction, he said, in Hebrews 8.13, it says, uh, in the saying new, as a covenant, he has made uh, the first covenant old. And the one being old, the Old Testament covenant, the law, and growing old is near extinction. Well, that's pretty much the way it is in Israel, because they no longer uh, uh, participate in all these things of um, the laws of Moses. In verse 14, tend your people by your rod, the sheep of your inheritance the ones encamping by themselves in a forest in in the midst of Carmel, uh, tending your sheep, and says in Revelation 2.27, and he shall tend them with a rod of iron, as the vessels made of clay shall be broken, as I also have received from my Father. And Jesus will come, tending uh, with the rod of iron. They shall feed Bashan, and Gilead is the days of the eon. And according to the days of your departure from out of the land of Egypt, I will show to them wonderful things. So the Jews will still be Jews, and they're going to be around for a long time in the future. And especially when you look at the last 10 chapters of Ezekiel. The nations uh, shall see and shall be disgraced even from out of all their strength, and the nations will change. Nations have changed over the 2,000 years since the Jews were cast out by the Romans uh, into uh, diaspora. And all the nations that were nations that ceased to be nations, but here Israel pops up. (laughs) Isn't that amazing? They shall place hands over their mouth, and their ears shall be deafened. The Hamas people and the Muslims are like, I mean, they're they're trying everything they can to get rid of Israel, and it is nothing is working their way. They shall lick dust of serpents, dragging earth, and I see that as what's happening there in the ground, the Hamas people, tunnels, living like worms. They shall be confounded uh, in their confinement. (laughs) Over the Lord our God, they shall be amazed and shall fear from you. And I believe when Israel defeats uh, this nation's coming against us, and they will be amazed and they will fear the God of Israel, even though eventually the man of sin will come. What God is as you, removing 
iniquities and passing over impieties to the remnants of his inheritance. Boy, did he ever with their uh, crucifying Jesus in iniquity and passing over the impieties to the remnants of his inheritance of the Jews today. His anger is not constrained for a testimony, for he is a wisher of mercy. In verse 17, over the Lord our God they shall be amazed and shall fear from you. Being amazed, Matthew 12, 23, with Jesus it says, and all the multitudes were amazed and said, is not this the son of David? They'll be amazed, just as Micah said. What God is as you, removing iniquities and passing over impieties to the remnants of his inheritance, and it certainly did that by the Jews crucifying Jesus, but yet Israel is still around, the remnant. His anger is not constrained for a testimony. He can still be angry at the people that are doing the wicked things. But uh, his anger is not constrained for a testimony, for he is a wisher of mercy. God once uh, has mercy. Then it says in Romans 9, 23 by Paul, and that he should make known the riches of his glory uh, upon vessels of mercy, us, which he prepared beforehand for glory. God has had mercy upon us. And I look at, as I mentioned, I think in the last video of uh, Israel today with the people that are coming against them, uh, they don't see too much mercy. Hopefully it, it will appear. In verse 19, he shall turn and shall pity us. Sees how bad things are going and he'll have pity upon us. Uh, and he shall sink our iniquities and shall throw away into the depths of the sea all our sins. And uh, that is something that Jesus only can do. Forgiveness of sins. And he shall give for truth to Jacob and mercy to Abraham. Uh, Israel, Jacob, and Abraham are the people of uh, belief, which uh, we are as Christian believers. Insofar as you swore an oath to our fathers, according to the former days. The end of the book of Micah. So here we have the timeline. Micah is now done. Isaiah, Hosea, all done. And the end of the kingdom of Israel. Now we have Hezekiah and uh, the end of Hosea. The next one is down with King Josiah, when Jeremiah comes along, and then the book of Zephaniah. So we'll go through Zephaniah next. I hope you join us. Until then, God bless.